The Rockford 200 is probably the most turbulent of Fark's traditions, with format changes and even absences from the schedule plaguing the event over the recent decade. But what hasn't changed is the fact that this is the hardest race to qualify for in all of FARC. And this year's return to the Rockford Speedway in Loves Park, Illinois is no exception, as 197 teams have flooded the quarter-mile bull ring to qualify for just 60 spots. And after prolapse bull qualifying, 20 drivers have punched their ticket to the main event. And Tanner Tannenbaum's Stage 1 pole will be the first major surprise of the weekend, the 44-year-old from Blue Springs, Missouri is making his first start and stole the 50-point bonus from the series regulars. But there was still a healthy amount of points up for grabs as the top 50 in pole qualifying would get bonus points. Some other notables uh, getting in through pole qualifying would be Chuck Johnson, who fell out of championship contention in recent weeks, but is still looking to put a, an exclamation point on his 2017 season, taking the pole for Stage 2. An armada of LaCoya powered cars would get in, Billy Bob Childers and Jim Kidd, the Power Surge America teammates, along with Winston Orwell, Liam O'Connor, and Zach Webster. Noah Dalitz qualified fifth in the number 63 DZ for MJ Racing. He was recently named as Kevin Monroe's replacement for 2018. Monroe himself qualified seventh in Stage 2. He and Bob Steffens still have an outside shot at the championship. Speaking of which, Billy Ray Smith Thompson and Lev Azarov, separated by just two points in the title hunt, failed to qualify in the top 20 and will have to race their way in through the B mains. So if they don't make it, that's really gonna throw a monkey wrench into things. But back to the top 20, a few other drivers making their debut in this Rockford 200, Carson Crompton, Derek Scheitier, and Rich Roy. Qualifying sixth for stage two, another big notable, Grant Papp. He'll be making just his third Fark start in a well over 30 year span, starting with his upset victory in Rockingham, North Carolina, all the way back in the early 1980s. And qualifying 10th in Stage 2 will be Tom Delgado, one of the world's most versatile racers. He has declared that this Rockford 200 will be his very last professional race. And now we move on to tonight's festivities, Alphabet Soup Qualifying. We will start things off with the H mains, featuring the, and there's no nice way to say this, the slowest of the qualifiers. Vitaly Solikov, the Rus Autosport team owner, will lead the field to the green in H main number one, with Billy Wayne Klinger bringing the field to the green in H main two. The top ten finishers of each H main will advance to the G mains. And now let's go trackside for the very first race of the Rockford 200 weekend. Vitaly Solikov gets a little loose, heading off of turn four, taking the green. Stan Coleman, car 97. Right on his outside, he gets a little loose again, but he hangs onto it. Stan Coleman still hanging around the outside. James Dreyfus in the ST6 takes third from Ronnie Holter in the three. Stan Coleman still trying to make a run at it, almost takes out the 57, but James Dreyfus is going to take it three wide. Stan Coleman really drops back off of turn four as the leaders take the yellow. And it's for Cornelius Cross in the 140, getting turned around along with Michael Campbell in the 43. Derek Dudding gets loose, cuts across the nose of the 77 of Carter McQuirt. And just like in the truck race back in the summer, Derek Dudding goes for a roll in turn two. This caution would end the race. Vitaly Solokov takes the win, leading all 14 laps. And despite that early spin, Cornelius Cross comes across the line 10th, the final transfer spot. Ash Holtz, Derek Dudding, Bubba Johnson, and Stan Coleman uh, are all out. Coleman, in fact, developed a problem and had to drop out of the race. That's why he dropped back so quickly. Now it's time for H main number two. Billy Wayne Klinger leads at the start over uh, Xavier Ruiz, Timothy Ruiz's much less talented brother, but he's going to take advantage of a slide by Klinger to power around the outside and take the lead, leaving, leaving Klinger in second. And this race would go uninterrupted. Xavier Ruiz leads every lap, 
and takes the win. Billy Wayne Klinger drops back a couple more spots to finish fourth. Harrison Belcher and Matthew Wilde round up the top three. Terry Gabb took the final transfer spot. Bud Holtz was the first car out, along with series regulars David Bloom and Flip Papadopoulos. Time for the G-Mains, where Marco DeBeast and Bernice Fellows took the pole positions. Sergei Yakovsky in the 28. Uh, who will be driving for Roos Autosport full-time next year. Did not fare too well. And there you see the top 10 who advanced from the H mains. Marco DeBeast leads at the start in G main 1. He has a couple top 10s to his name this season, although he's struggled to find pace otherwise. That's why he's so far down in qualifying. But Barry Spangler's trying to take the lead around the outside. That's what we saw in the H mains too. The outside line very strong at this track. And he leads as we get a caution for Vitaly Solokov and Michael Campbell going around. Oh, that's a big hit for the 57 to Solokov. That is going to take the H main one winner out. Marco De Beast getting a little pushy, trying to take that lead back. But Barry Spangler's got the outside. Oh, he gets a little out of shape. That's not going to help him. Jimmy Elkins has taken third from Kayla Yeager and Marco De Beast. Takes the lead back as Barry Spangler starts to struggle. Jimmy Elkins taking advantage. He wants second as the leaders now hit lap traffic. That's, I believe, the five of Eric Tiffany. That uh, quite ugly wrestle racing car. But Marco DeBeast gets into the back of Chuck Nags. Takes out the leader and himself. There goes Kayla Yeager sneaking through. She's going to take the lead out of turn four as the leaders struggle to get back up to speed, and that's gonna give her the win. Michael Campbell then spins her around after the flag for some reason. Marco DeBeast still finishes second, grabs a few points along with it. Jimmy Elkins fourth, so that accident didn't really affect them all that much. Gary Miles, Sergei Yakovsky, and Rick Salazar, three of the Russo Auto Sport cars, survive to the next round. James Dreyfus is our first survivor of two rounds. He started in the H mains, now he advances to the F mains. Bernice Fellows leads at the start of uh, G main number two. She made her debut at the Chicago Motor Speedway and didn't do too bad until she fell some laps back due to mechanical problems. She easily holds off Jacoby Jackson for a second. Jackson then gets turned around by Kyle Pitts on the front stretch. And that brings out our first caution. And then after the restart, Cletus McGuffey gets turned into the inside wall very hard by Chase Smith. And that's Buddy Connolly in the 29 Bruce Autosport car getting turned around and then turning Matthew Wilde around. This incident would end the race under yellow. Bernice Fellows leads every lap to take the victory. Truck Series regular Kyle Pitts would finish second. Barry Woods diddles the clown, came home third. The Helix Brothers round out the top five. Jacoby Jackson really fell back from his second place starting spot, but still finishes seventh. Harrison Belcher uh, survives another round with a ninth place finish, and Devin Wilde was the last car to transfer. And now we move on to the F mains, where we start to see some of the stronger entries. Tommy Bombwell and Mason St. Martin are on pole in their respective races. Leslie Riggs makes her return to the Fark Low Dollar Series, former series regular and now the promoter of the soon-to-be-renovated ABQ Speed Bowl. Ashley Tucker starts third in the Desert Star Car. She's really struggled a lot this season. Her only real highlight has been nearly winning the season opener until she developed mechanical trouble. Tabitha Tannenbaum, starting third in F Main 1, has quite a bit of work to do if she wants to catch up to her father in the feature. Chrissy Alaras and Leland Rogers were the last of the drivers to qualify for the F Mains on time, and following them are, of course, all the drivers who transferred from the G Mains. Tommy Bombwell gets a great start as he nearly has Leslie Riggs cleared at the line, but here she comes around the outside with a great ru run. Roger Fellows takes a trip through the grass, entering turn one, but it looks like they kept everything straight for the most part. No caution. Leslie Riggs takes, now takes the lead around the outside. And a little further back, you see three wide. Neil Miller, uh, Dan Bouchard, and Aaron Singer. That doesn't end well with Aaron Singer going up into the wall and turning over once. Dalton Johnson decides to join the party as well. And on the restart, Alice Rain slows down from sixth. Gary Miles in the 80, 85 piles in, and that's going to be the end of the line for Alice Rains. Dan Bouchard 
and Neil Miller get together along with Chrissy Alares, and that's a big crash for Bouchard. But that's also going to be the end of Neil Miller's rampage. This race would end under yellow. You saw Leslie Riggs going by uh, Bouchard's overturned car. She takes the win under caution with Tommy Bonwell in second. Roger Fellows clawed his way back up to fifth after rally crossing at the start. Kayla Yeager and Barry Spangler along with Sergei Akovsky survive another round. Tabitha Tannenbaum makes it through as well as Chrissy Alara's Last driver in on time, last driver to transfer. Dalton Johnson was the first car out, and unfortunately it's the end of the line for James Dreyfus, who survived the first two rounds. Time for F main number two, where Mason St. Martin really catches Annie Thomas sleeping at the start. 182 has no chance of getting alongside him. Ashley Tucker takes advantage. She wants second, but it's clear sailing for Mason St. Martin as he leads the first lap. But not for long, now Annie Thomas gets going and challenges him for the lead. On the inside, Mason St. Martin gets a little out of shape. That gives her the edge that she needs to take over the lead. And now Mason St. Martin hits the wall. Looks like handling's starting to go away on that car. Ashley Tucker going for second. But things are going to get hairy for the leader as John Helix and Harrison Belcher get together and she gets into the wall trying to avoid a crash. Ashley Tucker takes the lead, making it three wide with the lapped car of Harrison Belcher. Mason St. Martin now trying to get back around the 182 on the inside. Aiden Shepard started fourth, fell to seventh, now gets uh, turned around by Tristan Kristoff in the 30. That brings out the only caution of the race, but it's going to end the race as Ashley Tucker brings the field across the line for the win. Mason St. Martin would finish second, Annie Thomas has to settle for third. Tim Burkhalter fourth, Ramsey Cockener finishes fifth in his return to the series. Harv Henry advances, finishing pretty well by his standards. Bernice Fellows and Barry Woods survive another round, and Tristan Kristoff was the last car to transfer. And now we move on to the E-Mains, where we start to see even more of the strong entries. Trey Ashby and Roy Malik Jr. took the pole positions. I'm surprised to see Johnson Clapp and Trek Togger, who both won two races this year, so far down on the ladder. But fortunately for them, they've got mulligans this weekend, indicated by the little M next to their names. The mulligan was given to all 2017 race winners, as well as uh, Bobby Porto, the FARC Super Series champion, and Michael McKinley, the FARC Truck Series champion, who are both entered this weekend. If any time before the B-Mains they fail to finish outside of a transfer spot, they will get one chance to automatically advance to the next round as extra starters. Natalie Schrodinger and Stacey St. Martin were the last drivers to qualify for their races on time, and as usual, they are followed by the drivers who transferred from the last round. Trey Ashby catches Brandy DePaulo sleeping on the start. She falls back, but not Lawrence Burr. The 64B looks to the inside into turn one, but he can't quite get there. Trey Ashby holds the lead for now, but we've got a caution right away. Barry Spangler is sitting in the middle of the track, he broke down right at the start, never made a lap. He also saw Leslie Riggs go for a spin. She gets into the side of Wes Murray in the 53 and goes spinning across the infield, back up into turn three. Fortunately, doesn't do a whole lot of damage other than uh, Tommy Bonwell getting into the wall. Trey Ashby drops out of the race under yellow from the lead. Johnson Clapp gets into the back of Nasrin Mahmood. She hits the wall and brings out another yellow, but fortunately didn't hit anybody else. But now Kenny Brillin, the 1996 Rockford 200 winner, gets into Skeeter Farnsworth. Oh, that's not a whole lot of room for these guys to work with as Brillin gets squeezed into the wall by Farrell Burgundy. He hits the wall again off of four and gets turned around. What an ordeal that lap was for Kenny Brillin. He was running seventh and now has dropped well outside of a transfer spot. Meanwhile, Lawrence Burr leads his teammate Johnson Clapp coming to the white flag. They're coming up on Kenny Brillin. Lawrence Burr is hoping that he won't be a factor, but they're not gonna reach him. Johnson Clapp can't get to his bumper. Despite his best efforts, Lawrence Burr takes E-Main number one. Finishing a distant third would be Brandy DePaulo in the Burks used lingerie car. Jason Bates and Trek Togger round out the top five. Carrie Fenton, who will be driving the MJ64 full time in 2018, finishes sixth. Leslie Riggs and Tommy Bombwell finish in transfer spots despite that early incident for them, and Chrissy Alares once again barely squeaks by. 
But this race is going to be the end of the line for several drivers, including G-Main winner Kayla Yeager, Sergey Yakovsky, and of course, pole sitter Trey Ashby and Barry Spangler had their mechanical trouble and bring up the rear of the field. Roy Malik Jr. leads at the start of E-Main number two, but he's got uh, Rachel Plord in the 116 and Jacob Eicholtz in the K2K, putting pressure on him and going three wide down the backstretch. Eicholtz, with the most experience between these three, tries to make the very inside line work, but the 457 gets into his side off a of turn four. And Eicholtz doesn't seem to like that very much, taking a swipe at him. Off of turn two, Rachel Plord out of contention for the lead, but there's an accident behind them, and it will be Malik keeping the lead by a hair. Now let's take a look at what happened. Three Y doesn't work. Mike Malone goes for a spin right across uh, Austin Howard's nose. And behind these guys, Tristan Kristoff checks up but gets turned into the pit wall by Mason St. Martin. And that will be the end of the line for car 30. The battle for the lead continues after the restart. Roy Malik gets a bit out of shape, allowing Eicholtz to take advantage. But despite the strength of the outside line, Eicholtz might have the upper hand here. Especially since he just got into the side of the 457, Eicholtz clears him as they see Harv Henry in the wall. That brings out another caution. Eicholtz leads at the yellow. And after the restart, things start to fall apart for Roy Melk as he uh, takes the Plord sisters out, Rachel and Melissa, in the 117. He's got to be kicking himself right now as he scrambles to cross the line in a transfer spot as this yellow will end the race. Jacob Eicholtz takes the win. Bob Haney in the 56 takes over the second spot. Phyllis Theodore has a very good run considering that she finished last in the Park Super Series points this year. Ashley Tucker continues to climb the ladder with a fourth place finish, trying to end her season with Desert Star on a high note. Tim Burkhalter survives another round. And the Plord sisters and Roy Malik Jr., despite that big accident at the end, still manage to finish in transfer spots, though I imagine the Plords are not too happy with Malik right now. Bernice Fellows was unfortunately the first car out, as well as a couple of notables, George Bryan and Austin Howard. And now for the D-Main lineups, 20 laps, 24 cars. D-Main 1 is looking very stacked with Kurt Pliskin, Vincenzo Focasato, and 2014 series champion Ryan Matthews among the heavy hitters, but it will be Xander Massey in the 4X leading the field to the start. Larry Olson and Bob Stewart, two debutantes, will lead the field to the green in D-Main 2. Andrea Kinasa starts 12th in her return to the series. And now we see the drivers transferring from the E-Mains. Johnson Clapp and Truck Togger still have mulligans at their disposal. And the two drivers leading at the start of D-Main 1 could not be more different. Xander Massey, the self-proclaimed best D-Class driver in race sim, versus Kurt Pliskin, the TM Master Cup Series veteran. But surprisingly, it's Massey taking off at the start. Kurt Pliskin runs wide in turn three. And we have an accident already. Wes Murray and Mike Vandiver get into the wall at the start. And on lap two, it's the end of the line for Wes Murray. Trouble for your E-Main 1 winner as Lawrence Burr gets turned around by Brandy DiPaolo. After the restart, Trek Togger gets involved, and it looks like that damage is going to take out the 74, meaning that he can't use his mulligan. And at the same time, Carrie Fenton broke down. She's out of the race now. Kurt Pliskin not playing very nice with Xander Massey on the restart, wanting to put the kid in his rearview mirror. Vincenzo Focasato runs third, and fourth is Laura Nightshade, currently running the highest of the debutantes in this race. With just four laps to go, Johnson Clapp runs 13th. He's in danger of losing that spot to Ke Skeeter Farnsworth. He might have to use up his mulligan if he can't move forward. Tommy Bombwell, that black A1 car, is the one he needs to pass if he wants to transfer with his mulligan intact, and it looks like he might be willing to use the bumper to do it, but Lou Singer Jr. gets turned by Ryan Matthews and ends up in the wall. And there's the pass that Johnson Clapp needs to make, coming at the cost of uh, Tommy Bombwell and Lou Singer Jr. Meanwhile, Kurt Pliskin leads the rest of the way and takes the win once again under yellow. Lawrence Bird transfers despite the early accident. Skeeter Farnsworth was the last car to get in. Chrissy Alares, Leslie Riggs, and Tommy Bombwell are eliminated after surviving a few rounds. And Trek Togger is out as well, unable to use the mulligan after dropping out of the race. Teammate number two is on, Larry Olson and Bob Stewart. 
getting the chance to shine on the front row without so many heavy hitters in this race. Larry Olsen almost slides up into the 73S, I think that rattled Stewart a little, but he is fighting back, getting back to the outside of Olsen, off of turn four, and Bob Stewart leads the first lap, three wide behind them, Dom Forrest in between uh, Frank Azzaretto and Gian Larson, but it looks like they get that settled peacefully as Dom Forrest moves up into third. Andrea Kinasa gets a rude reintroduction to the Vark Low Dollar Series as she goes for a roll off of turn two. Ashley Tucker has a tire go down after the restart. She has to pit for that and lose a couple of laps. Jordi Cerrone gets turned around. Scott Roush and Phyllis Theodore go into the wall as well, and Ashley Tucker causes a, an accident coming out of the pits involving Denny Conway, Dalton Carter, and Frank Azzaretto. And now we got a stack up on the restart. Roy Mell gets into the back of Annie Thomas. Rachel Plort hits the wall and gets up into the air. Daryl Quick has a ton of damage to the front of the number eight Pearson Sweeney machine. And a serious accident on the restart is going to end the race under yellow. Bob Stewart is going to take the win with Dom Forrest behind him. Larry Olson has to settle for third. Jacob Eichholz and Kyle Pearson round out the top five. Tim Burkhalter survives another round. Andrea Canasa somehow finishes 10th and transfers to the C mains after rolling her car. Frank Azzaretto, despite his damage, was the last car to get in. And most of the cars that were eliminated were victims of the several big accidents throughout the race. Just two steps on the ladder to go, starting with the C mains. We will have 26 cars going for 13 spots in each race, with Archer Helms and Jeff Little taking the pole positions. Rip Tyler, the former two-time FARC Low Dollar Series champion, and Shane Lake, multiple-time winner of the Oxford 250, will return to the series in this race. Michael McKinley, the Park Truck Series champion, will start fourth in C-Main 2. He's got a mulligan at his disposal in case he needs it. And so does Brian George with his victory from earlier in the year, starting 14th in C-Main 2. Time for C-Main 1, where Archer Helms gets a little loose coming to the green flag. Rip Tyler takes advantage, nosing ahead as they get into turn one. We saw a couple cars careening through the grass, so does Armand Del Pere, but everyone keeps it going, and we have no caution yet. Rip Tyler leads lap number one. Gabriel Massena comes across Kurt Pliskin's nose, trying to avoid Pierre Sebastian. He comes back up onto the track and causes an even bigger accident. Davey Carter and Vincenzo Focasato get off the ground. Greg Gray has heavy damage. Skeeter Farnsworth, Johnson Clapp is collected. Archer Helms dropped out of the race under that caution, along with his teammate Shane Lake, and Rip Tyler was very slow to get around that accident, so Zachary Fitzwater snuck by and took the lead for the restart. Johnson Clapp is still running, but with very heavy damage. And there's another caution, Ross Schneider and Armand Del Pere have gotten together. Clapp is running well outside a transfer spot, but he's still in the race, so he can use that mulligan if he needs to. And here's what happened to Ross Schneider. He broke down uh, in the middle of the track. Luther Austin got sent into the pit wall, and Armand Del Pere just slid right in. And for once we get a green flag finish, Zachary Fitzwater leads the rest of the way to take C-Main number one on debut. Yevgeny Kuznetsov worked his way up into second. Packer Carroll was third, the first of the series regulars, and he grabs 10 bonus points. Ryan Matthews grabs a much better finish than in his D main. Lawrence Burr moves up once again, and Johnson Clapp finishes 17th, but he is able to use his mulligan to get into the B main. C main 2 begins with a great start from Jeff Little, trying to avenge his teammate Leslie Riggs, but he can't quite clear Joshua Pacer. Pacer in the 88, who gets into the side of him through turn two, and that's gonna knock him back, but here comes Eddie Vero in the 04. Crew chief over at MJ Racing, but driving for Focus Auto Sports this weekend, he makes a bid for the lead on the inside. Michael McKinley and Pacer fight for third. Kyle Pearson gets turned around by Jacob Eicholtz on the front stretch, holding up Tim Burkhalter. And that's not going to help the six, who has driven all the way up from the F mains. And on the restart, he runs into more trouble as he spins Dalton Carter into the pit lane. I can tell you that he's going to have a harder time getting into the feature if he makes a bunch of enemies on the way. Meanwhile, the battle is still on at the halfway point between Eddie Vero and uh, Jeff Little. 
Vero's been with MNJ Racing for a long time, but he's been racing the Fark Truck Series on the side for Focus Auto Sports, and now he's trying to get into the Rockford 200 and uh, show what he can do before he goes babysitting as Noah Dallas' crew chief next year. But a big stack up is gonna send Melissa Plord into the turn one wall, and Matt Pearson gets squeezed into the turn two wall by Carter Fitzgerald and goes for a couple of rolls. His bid to make the Rockford 200 is now over. Back up front, Michael McKinley comes after Jeff Little for second as Eddie Vero tries to pull away. Chris Crompton in the 707 runs fourth with Marissa Raines trying to get to his bumper. It's going to be Truck Series regulars 1-2 if Michael McKinley can pull off the pass. In fact, as I mentioned before, McKinley was the champion this year, winning half of the races. But the race is going to end under yellow as Bob Stewart gets spun out of a transfer spot by Kyle Pearson in the 78. Eddie Vero takes C-Main number two. Michael McKinley could not complete the pass on Jeff Little and has to settle for third. Mark Thompson does a good job getting into the B-Mains back in the SWH Racing 251. His teammate Danica Hollifield, however, gets eliminated. Tim Burkhalter was the last car to transfer, continuing his journey that started in the F mains, though he might have made an enemy of Dalton Carter in the process, and Brian George finishes a dismal 22nd, but gets into the B mains thanks to his mulligan. And now we will finally decide the 60 car grid for the Rockford 200 with the B mains. 29 cars will battle for 40 laps each, the top 16 will get into the Rockford 200, and if your favorite driver doesn't make it, don't worry, we will have a whopping 8 wildcard spots to hand out afterwards. Todd Stater took the pull for B main number 1 in a pretty strong follow-up to his victory at Salem last week. Aubrey Wood took the pull for B main 2. Starting 3rd in B main 1 will be Carl Hampton the 4th, great grandson of Carl Hampton, the founder of Carl Superstores, a longtime partner of Fark Racing. He'll be driving Kurt Walker's second entry tonight and full-time in 2018. Starting seventh in B-Main 2 will be Kathy Williams, the Dash Cup regular, and out of left field pick for the second Ike Durbin car, but she took to the track well in her first time on an American Bullring. Points leader Billy Ray Smith Thompson starts all the way down in 12th in B Main 1. He's, his position is not entirely safe. He'll have a bit of work to do to fend off all the hungry drivers behind him. Bobby Porteau, the FARC Super Series champion, starts 14th in B Main 1. His brother Hamilton will start 12th in B Main 2. And if you thought Billy Ray Smith Thompson was unsafe, Lev Azarov's situation is even more dangerous as he was the last driver to qualify for the B-Mains on time, letting Smith Thompson gain a few points on him in the process. So we won't be able to truly decide our championship contenders until the B-Mains are over with. Todd Stater gets a great start over Brandon Krasta. He really caught the 42 sleeping on the start. Krasta will lose second immediately to Carl Hampton. And here comes Hampton to take the lead, making a big statement in his debut. And he looks so much stronger than the 66 on this first lap. He takes the lead with ease. Kurt Walker looks like a very smart man right now in his choice of drivers. But further back, Bobby Porto runs into trouble, getting turned around with the help of Zachary Fitzwater and Packer Carroll. Jamie Flock gets the worst of it. That The rear end of that triple zero is in bad shape. Monica Rook and Rick Forrest get together, sending Billy Ray Smith Thompson into the infield as well. And Yevgeny Kuznetsov climbs the wall, but he keeps going. No caution. Armand Delpair and Riley Knight now get together, taking Packer Carroll into the wall with them. Todd Stater got some damage. He pitted on an earlier caution, fell back, and that's what he gets. Todd Stater would keep going, but Mariano Zavala and Ryan Matthews don't, as they have to drop out of the race under yellow. Armand Delpair runs into more trouble as he gets caught up in an accident between Nick Azure and Dan Lechleiter right as the leaders bear down on them. Thankfully, uh, Carl Hampton gets through without an issue. The battle for the last transfer spot is on with less than 15 laps to go between Riley Knight and Monica Rook. Knight has the upper hand right now. She's got a clean lower line. Monica Rook has Rip Tyler in front of her, but just ahead of those two, Kurt Bliskin and Rick Forrest get together, sending Lawrence Burr for a ride. And I just saw Yevgeny Kuznetsov dive into the pits. He's done for the night. But Rick Forrest and Lawrence Burr were running in the top 10. 
And now, they're stuck in the battle for the last transfer spot. Riley Knight and Brandon Craston now get together, sending Kurt Bliskin into the wall, and Alexa Lake and Armand Del Pair get together on their own, going for a roll. So more problems plaguing the top 10, but this would set up a one-lap shootout. Carl Hampton is well out in front with uh, two lapped cars behind him, Zachary Fitzwater and Lawrence Burr fighting for 16th. Carl Hampton takes the win, and Zachary Fitzwater holds off Lawrence Burr for 16th, barely squeaking into the Rockford 200. And now we have decided stage one for the feature, except for the wild cards, of course. Anthony Griffith finished second, Packer Carroll third, first of the series regulars once again. Billy Ray Smith Thompson finishes sixth, getting into the race easily and gaining 11 more points on Lev Azarov. Johnson Klatt makes good use of his mulligan to get into the race. Todd Stater, Kurt Bliskin, and Rick Forrest make it in despite getting into accidents. And once again, Zachary Fitzwater got the last transfer spot, beating Lawrence Burr in a drag race. And now we head over to B-Main 2, which will decide Stage 2 of the Rockford 200. Aubrey Wood leads at the start, clearing Taylor Brillin with ease. Timothy Ruiz now comes after the C9 car for a second. But on lap 5, Jeff Little gets turned around after Ali Riggs gets loose. Frank Azzarato in the 19A gets collected as well. Michael McKinley's bid to make the Rockford 200 is over as his engine expires, coming to the restart. He can only crawl to the pits, but we stay green. Meanwhile, Aubrey Wood gets out of shape. Timothy Ruiz takes advantage. Ruiz has easily been one of the strongest drivers without a win all season, and if he can get into the race, I think he'd be a threat. He certainly knows he's got a fast car right now as he works on Aubrey Wood, but he can't quite close the deal right now. Taylor Brillen and Keegan Mallory look on, just waiting for something to happen between these two. But Aubrey Wood seems to be sliding around quite a bit. Uh, Ruiz has to get going, or else uh, she might take him out. And now he finally clears her, entering turn one. And how about Tim Burkhalter in the six for the Dave Hetzel team? He's put together easily the best drive of anyone tonight, coming all the way up from the F mains, and now running well within a transfer to the Rockford 200. He currently runs 11th, trying to hold off Chris Crompton for that spot. Lev Azarov has now gotten his act together, driving all the way up to 6th from his 15th place starting spot. But all eyes would be on Timothy Ruiz as he rounds the final corner and gets caught up in a wreck between two backmarkers coming to the checkered flag. He wins the race, but that's going to be quite a bit of damage that he just doesn't need. And that pileup in turn 1 is probably the biggest post-race accident I've ever seen in Fark Racing, as Donnie Olsen is blocking the track at the line, gets turned over by Mark Thompson, and that just sets off a melee in turn 1. So many teams are going to need to repair their cars between now and the feature. What a way to end the night. But Timothy Ruiz wins in all the chaos. Aubrey Wood finishes second, Taylor Brillen third, Keegan Mallory fourth, Lev Azarov gained one more spot in the final laps, and one more point on his rival Billy Ray Smith Thompson. Alex Constantine and Kathy Williams are in. Tim Burkhalter is in, again, coming all the way up from the F mains. Kelly Ashcroft and Chris Crompton are in. Max Hollifield will be the only SWH car in the race. Hamilton Porto joins his brother Bobby in the race. Silas White, Jacob Eichholz, Richard Scott, and Eddie Vero round out the top 16. But we aren't done yet. We've only decided 52 of the 60 spots. And now it is time to hand out wild cards, four for each of the first two stages. The stage one wild cards will go to Bernice Fellows, Kayla Yeager, John Helix, and Alex Mazzone, who, by the way, was the absolute slowest of the 197 cars in pole qualifying. So we might as well say that stage one will be run with a chicane. The stage two wild cards will be Phyllis Theodore, Jordy Cerrone, Austin Howard, and Bob Stewart. So, these eight drivers, by luck of the draw, will get a second chance and get to show off what they've got in the Rockford 200. Who will take the checkered flag? Who will take the FARC Low Dollar Series Championship? 
These questions will finally be answered next time, and you can catch all the highlights right here on the FARC Racing Network.